Peak Performance Secrets starts now. Well, all right. Hello, hello. My name is Kamoya Benjamin and welcome to today's episode of Peak Performance Secrets. I identify as a peak performance coach. And what does that mean? It means that I come alongside people and help them to create more. You see, I believe that there is more for you. I believe there's more for you. And in an attempt to go for more, what is required of you to get more is to deploy yourself at the optimum mindset and skill set required in order for you to create more, whatever more it presents. And I work with individuals, I work with teams in an effort to help them create more impact, more income, more decisiveness, more clarity, more awareness, more cohesion, whatever more it presents. There's an inner game that's required for more to become available. And in this week, I have been doing a series on mentorship. Mentorship is a powerful avenue for leadership development, for peak performance. And we did talk about the the mystery that mentorship is and how it creates mastery. You want to catch that series if you hadn't. And I did share my personal story, my mentorship journey and the key mentors that have shaped me into who I am today. And in today's episode, I want to focus on something that I believe is very unique, and it's the five mistakes that kill mentorship slowly. The five mistakes that kill mentorship slowly. I have seen in my own journey as a mentee and also as a mentor, for I have heard the opportunities to do that in the you know short time that I have been alive, I have seen these five dangers and why they are, you know, slow killers is because they can be easily missed. They can easily be overlooked. You need to be operating at a level of awareness where you can see how they are sabotaging the mentorship relationship. Okay, let's get started. The first mistake, the first mistake to avoid is this idea of making excuses. Avoid making excuses. Why is this a mentorship killer? You see, when you're operating at the level of awareness that you're at and getting the results that you're getting and you connect with a mentor and the mentor introduces you to a higher level of awareness and they commission you to go out and take action, from your level of awareness, it's very easy to argue for why you did not show up, why you did not follow through, why you did not take the required action. It's very easy to have a reason and you think it's a good enough reason as to why you've not taken the action in the way that was required and instructed of you by the mentor. And so when you meet with your mentor, you know, you can say, oh, you know, I haven't done this because... You know, I wasn't able to get there because there's something that happened. I wasn't able, and I've shared this in one of my sessions, that every time you use the the word because, you literally are in that particular moment blaming something outside of you for your reasons, for your results, for your circumstances, for your conditions. And by that, you are giving that other thing more power than you. It is because, it is, it is the cause of. So every time you're there, you know, telling your mentor, you know, I, I couldn't do it because. You're, you, you're inferring that, you know, it has greater power and it overpowered my will. It overpowered my commitment. It overpowered my initiative because. It's the because. And my encouragement is don't cause things to be the cause for you not showing up and following through on what your mentor asked you to do. Rather, be the cause for the outcome, not other things. Don't say I didn't do because it, because they, because time, because, 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 because what? And it's the slow mentorship killer. I tell you what, your mentor is not going to tell you, oh, you didn't do the thing we asked you to do. Okay, get out. I'm I'm no longer mentoring you. Done. Go away. Even if it's a pay to play or a seeking to serve. I talked about the two parts of mentorship. Catch that, catch that session. And even if it's a it's it's a pay to play, your mentor is just gonna be like, you know what? I don't think I want to spend time with James. You know, James takes up my time. I give him nuggets, but he doesn't take action on them. Guess what? In my next session, I'm just gonna be over there thinking, ah, oh, no, do I want to give this guy gems? Do I want to give this guy? Do I want open the wallet? 
of my of my best ideas. Do I, do I even want to spend time with him interrogating him? This guy is all about mis- making excuses. It's a slow killer because you're not going to be terminated immediately. But you will see that the commitment with which your mentor would show up to conversations with you wanes. The excitement with which they would meet you wanes. Why? Because you give more excuses than you get results. And you you blame other things. Now you see, from the level of awareness you're operating from, it makes so much sense. That's why you're making excuses at that level of awareness. Not knowing that it is the slow killer to the mentorship relationship. More than anything, when a mentor gives you direction, you instantly are a steward of that advice. Instantly you are a steward of that wisdom. And if it does not produce results in your life, it's not because the principle is broken, but it's because you do not want to apply yourself in the process so that it can make you the person who creates that outcome because the mentor has that outcome. Which brings me to my second mistake. I'm going to bring that up very quickly. Yeah, but. (laughs) Yeah, but. It's connected to the excuses. It's connected to the excuses. And you see, there's one where you give an excuse and you're like, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm going to make time to do it. I, I, I didn't because I, I couldn't because and I'm because because. And you're OK. And you're, it's a different it's a different energy where you, you you're humble about the fact that you didn't follow through. And your mentor is like, oh, OK, that, that's a waste of time. Why are we having this session today? Because you cannot improve nothing. My mentor Paul told me you have to have a result to improve a result. So show me your last result. Take action and get a bad result because at least we can improve something. You must have a result in order to improve a result. And so the, the, the second one, this one, yeah, but, is you arguing for what you don't want. It's making agreement with the limitation. Again, this is from a level of awareness where a mentor can see your potential. They know the the, the landscape very well. They know the terrain. And they are asking you to take action that will give you the results that you haven't got. But you're arguing from your level of awareness, fighting for what you don't want. What does that mean? Mentor says, hey, you need to do A, B, and C. You tell them, yeah. Yeah. Like, I get it. But you don't understand my situation. But you know it's different for me. But you know I've never, but, but you know it's not, but you know I will never, but you know I can't, but you know it won't. You've done this with younger children or people who are younger than you, whether it's siblings or children that you have. As a parent from a higher level of awareness, you tell them, hey, watch out for this, it's going to go this way. They're like, yeah, 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 dad, but yeah, but. The, 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 the worst two words to come out of your mouth when you are with a mentor. Yeah, I get it. But now, yeah, that's, that's a high level of awareness. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, but whoop, level of awareness drops. This is a killer. Because the mentor is trying to pull you out of the pit. And you're like, let go of my hand. Yeah, I know you want to help me. But let let me go. Let me stay here in the mud. Let me stay down here in the sewage. Yeah, but. In other words, every comment you make after but is a statement where you are arguing, you're, you're fighting for what you don't want. Yeah, I know. I know you don't have that. And I'm asking you to take this next step, even with the awareness that you don't have that. So for you to tell me that, yeah, but, is to say, oh, that's great, but hey, I'm fighting for where I am. Do do, do you want to make the next step? Why then don't you become involved? Why don't you entertain the idea that's coming from the mentor to do what you've never done so that you not only become the person you've never been, and now begin to operate at that level of awareness, but also have what you've never had. 
Because the mentor has that outcome. The mentor has that result. Why did he choose you? So that you don't have it. And so looking at this is noticing that, yep, this is the second killer. And it kills slowly. It kills slowly. As a mentor, there are people who've done this with me and I'll tell them, okay, so what, what do you want to do? What do you want to, how, how do you want to navigate this situation? Because there are only two ways I believe that you can learn. You can learn by going out there and making all the mistakes. Do it yourself. Figure it out on yourself. You'll get there. Granted, you'll get there. But how long is it going to take you? Or you can go and find somebody who's learned that, who's been in the trenches, who's got the experiences, who knows how it shouldn't be done, and say, hey, help me here. Take all their 15 years of failure and apply it in your situation. Kaboom. And accelerate the process. That's the mystery in mentorship. That's the mystery in mentorship that creates mastery. And as, as, as I've been a mentor, and even as a coach now, it is not my business as a coach to give people answers, but it's to encourage them to say, hey, what do you see? What could be different? All right, let's go try that. You go try the thing that you want to do from your level of awareness. And then when you get the failure, probably you're going to be more tuned in for what it is that I have to share as a next step. Ha, let's, let's look at the third one. This is an all common one. Mismatched expectations. And mismatched expectations come from uncommunicated expectations. It comes from, you know, um, values that are, that, that are different. But I want to give you an example to highlight for you what I mean by mismatched expectations. I remember my mentor introduced me or rather through the engagement with my mentor, I got connected to one of his friends, very senior at his level. And we, 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 we kind of connected. Uh, and this gentleman, you know, was asking me questions and he was engaging with me. I had spent time with him while he was here in the country and taking him out all on behalf of my mentor. Okay, I'm not doing this in my own private capacity. I was sent. I'm on an errand. And I'm supposed to take this guy around. I'm supposed to chauffeur him. I'm supposed to show him. I'm supposed to be there at his beck and call, whatever he needs while he's around. And so through the process, this, this gentleman, you know, uh, likable and, you know, seeking to connect with people and wants to understand where you are. And, you know, in the process, we connected. And I thought that, hey, you know what? I already connected with this guy. And because I have his email address, I'm going to email him without the consent of my mentor. Woo! I stepped on a live wire. Now, I didn't know that I, I was not supposed to do that. It's not something that was obvious to me. Hey, I was not asking him for money. I was just referring to a leadership program that he had talked about and, you know, he was, you know, he, he had described that. I wanted to know more about the leadership program. I mean, I was like, I know this guy, you know, we're friends. I could reach out to him. No, wrong. I had not understood the expectations that my mentor had of me as far as the relationships that he had were concerned. To the extent that I could not go into a shop where he had gotten a discount and claim the same discount on his name. That's as far as it goes. And so when you are in a mentoring relationship, like in my example, it is very important to understand the expectations. Because what may appear okay to you may not be okay to the mentor. And it's these small things that erode trust and cause the mentor to say, you know what? This guy is a liability in my life. How could he do this? How could he reach out to this person and do this? I got to the point where the people who are friends with my mentor, I didn't want to do business with them. I didn't want nothing to do with them. Because jeopardizing those relationships would come to bite me later. And so mismatched expectations is the third and very deadly. Let's cover one more. Mentor-driven mentorship. This is a killer, a, kill, a slow killer of mentoring relationships. Most people are like, you know what? You know, I, I got a great mentor. Benjamin is my mentor. 
Yeah. Now I'm the one who's supposed to follow you. In my mentorship journey, the most painful thing I experienced is to have to chase a mentee, to do an assignment, to follow through on work we had talked about, to follow through on action, to follow through on are we meeting tomorrow at this time? It was my responsibility. And I noticed that that just killed the mojo for me to mentor. Who's in need here? Who's looking for who? So who should be driving this relationship? Who should be chasing the other? And one of the things that caused me to stop mentoring certain people is when I had to chase them. Mentorship is a mentee-driven process, period. Whether it's seeking to serve or paying to play, whether you're not giving money, you're just giving of your services and your energy, or you're paying for it, it's a mentee-driven process. And my mentor told me, Benjamin, because you know, I'm in a paid, you know, paid to play mentorship space. He told me you have to ha you have to fight for my attention, and I and I understood that from a level of awareness to know there are many people who are seeking his time, energy, and attention, and I've got to carve out a space in his mind where he knows there's a guy called Benjamin, and he's really really excited about this, and he's taking action like he's a doer. He's a doer. He's got, I'm going to give it to him. He's going to take it. He's going to run with it. He's going to come back with a result. I'm going to improve that result. Boom, boom, boom. That's how I've been able to get additional 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, and spend a night in my mentor's house without him telling me, you're going to pay. I know the value of that. But it's because mentorship has not become something that he's chasing me. I'm the one who's chasing him. And when as a mentee, you find your mentor is chasing you, just know that mentorship relationship is on its way to dying. Pretty soon that mentor will not be available for you. Pretty soon, he'll, his, his calendar will be too full for you. He's going to be like, no, I'm not available. No, actually, I'm not available. Actually, I, I, when I look, I, I'm not available for the next six weeks. It's just like, I don't need to chase you in my life. I've got already many things that I'm chasing. So mentorship is a mentee-driven process. And when the mentor is always driving the mentorship process, it begins to die slowly. Let's share the last one unresolved offense this is a common one but most people take it for granted when mentorship is going on one man to another man to woman whatever the mentorship relationship is offense is going to happen it's granted somebody's going to say something or do something that will be offensive and when it's not resolved it begins to it begins to you know break the trust it begins to erode the confidence it begins to erode the relationship unresolved offense now these are top five slow killers there are many quick killers i, I don't want to discuss this but these are the slow killers and if you are in a mentoring relationship mentoring is one of the uh, most powerful you know pathways for developing leadership i called it the mystery that creates mastery because there's not just the skill transfer, but there's also a spirit transfer, which is really powerful. And I want you to appreciate that if you're in a mentoring relationship, do everything that you can to make it thrive and watch out for these five big mistakes. Right again from the top. Number one, excuses. Run away from that. Better come and say, I'm sorry, I haven't done it. Give me time. But don't come and give excuses. Number two, yeah, but stop fighting from a place of ignorance. Number three, mismatched expectations. Be clear about values, be clear about expectations and be the one to lead because mentorship is a mentee driven process. Be the one to call out, what do you expect? How should I show up? At what time? Get those things down, ask the questions. And then finally, if anything happens and you mess up and there's an offense, ensure that you resolve it in the quickest way possible. Type in the comments, what is it that you've taken away? What has spoken to you that you feel, wow, this is my goal today. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching Peak Performance Secrets in this episode of Mentorship. Be well and bye for now.